Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about how to use a joystick for MATLAB applications in Simulink. So uh, I have a, a physical Logitech joystick right here next to me. Okay, here it is. And uh, it has a bunch of buttons and it has this forward, backward motion, left and right motion. And as I said, it has here four buttons on the top that you can see. And it has this potentiometer here on the back, which is used for the third axis of the joystick and a bunch of buttons around it. And we can get the signals from all of these motions from the axis as well as the buttons of the joystick when we are uh, working with uh, Simulink. So in order to do that in Simulink, we need this block, which is the joystick input, and you can just search it. It is under aerospace uh, block sets. And uh, if you double click on it, uh, it has a joystick ID. So if you have more than one joystick, uh, you can get uh, signals from any of them that you want. So here I only have one, so joystick ID is going to be one for me. And then it has outputs for the axes as well as the buttons. And uh, since you have several axes and several buttons, these are combined signals, okay? So you have to use uh, the multiplexers to break it down into individual ones. So here you see I have three axes, and so I break it down into three signals, left and right, forward, backward, and then the potentiometer, which is for up and down motion. And I can show them individually. Also, I have 11 buttons here. So I can use a demultiplexer with 11 exits, uh, or if I use three, then it's going to break it into three parts, one to four, five to eight, and nine to 11, these buttons. So here I'm not going to show any button uh, from five to 11, so I use a terminator block, but one to four, again, I break it down into four signals. The fourth one I don't want to show you, but the first three I'm going to show you. So buttons one, two, and uh, three. And what are these buttons? Button one is this guy right under uh, my uh, finger, this guy, that you see when I uh, click on it, this uh, red button here uh, is going to turn uh, on. And uh, then you have buttons two, three, and four all on the top. And then buttons uh, from uh, two, uh, three, four, five on the top. And then uh, from six to 11 are all on the bottom, uh, the exterior, the, basically the external side. So here, I also added these blocks from dashboard that you can see in this picture. And uh, I uh, connected two linear, um, basically, uh, a potentiometer, right, or linear uh, gauges that they can show you the left and right motion. So pay attention when I move left and right. Look at the top one. Now you might say, why well, does the bottom one move? Because I cannot perfectly move it left and right. When I move left and right, there is a little bit forward, backward motion as well. So the bottom one moves a little bit with it, but not too much. So here the range, as you can see, goes from negative one to one. I can change it. So it goes from any number to any number. Okay, and now look at forward and backward motion. You see now the bottom one goes all the way. The top one might move a little bit. Because again, I cannot do perfect forward, backward without no left and right. Okay, yes. And this potentiometer here on the back, when I turn it, look at the radial gauge here at the bottom. You see this uh, potentiometer down here goes from negative one to one when I go from one end of it to the other end of it. So we use this, we can use this as third axis of the potentiometer. And as I said, this button right under my finger is what is uh, button one. So here you see this uh, light turns on. And I can see all of the signals in this scope here, right? So look. Here is the scope block. And uh, let me show you that. Let me get this out of the way. So here, look at the left and right. You see, look, it goes from negative one to one, as you can see. Then look at uh, forward, backward here. You see, and it's on auto scale. Now look at the potentiometer on the top. You see here, in the middle, goes negative one to one. Now look at button here, down right down here, look. It goes from zero to one. And it's just on off. 
Okay, the same with button two. Look here, button two is on the top. Look at button two on the top right corner. Of course, I just did not show you button two multiplied by two. That's what I showed you. So uh, if you don't want your signal to go from zero to one, because all of the buttons go from zero to one, if you want to scale it up and down and put it in a specific range here, look, I multiplied by two. So now the top right corner signal goes from zero to two. Or here, uh, the bottom uh, right corner signal is bottom three, which is uh, this button here in the center. Okay, this guy. And I multiplied by two and added the one. So it goes from one to three. So in general, you can basically change your range from zero to one to any other uh, set of numbers, A and B, by just multiplying the signal by B minus A and adding the A, the uh, basically uh, lower end of the range. Okay, and so, uh, as I said, the buttons are all just uh, basically on off, but the good thing with the axes is you can have values in between and you can control how fast you go from one, uh, Mac, one end to the other end from max to min. Look here, look at the left and right. Now here I slowly go from negative one to one. Look, if you see here, right you see look at the top left i slowly go so i have a, a low frequency right but now look i go fast left and right you see or i go fast forward and backward look now i go slow forward and backward so i have the control over the frequency of that under my hand Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, show you how to uh, connect these dashboard blocks here. So let me stop the uh, animation for you. And uh, here I added a picture uh, just to make it uh, more clear. So here I explained for you button one, button two and three, these guys. And then the forward, backward, uh, left and right motion, as well as uh, up and down that I'm going to show you, I'm going to do in another demo for a crane that is made by MATLAB. And I use this potentiometer. But here, this gauge, which you can get from uh, under dashboard, let me show you. So if you go to Simulink and go to dashboard, you can have all sorts of different, uh, basically, blocks here, right? So you see here is that uh, radial gauge, that's the linear gauge. And uh, then this is the lamp I used and so on. If you want to know how to insert that picture, right? This is a picture that is this guy here, okay? This one is called an image. You bring an image block and then double click here and then choose the picture, right? This one, and then it's gonna show that picture and you can of course resize it. But let's say I brought the light and I wanna connect that light to the signal that goes to a uh, button one to this signal. So what do I do? I double click on that button block. And when you bring it, this portion here on the top, that is basically there is nothing here. Okay, there is nothing here. And this bottom portion also has only one state. Let, let me bring a uh, uh, one right from the uh, dashboard and I show you how to set it up. So here I brought the light. And now I want to connect this light maybe to something else. So if I double click on the lamp or light, you clearly see that on the top, it's not connected to anything. So now you can go ahead and let's say connect on uh, this uh, button two times two. So I click here and you see it picks that signals and uh, signal. And if you say connect, now it is connected to it. Now, what's the problem? The problem is if I apply an OK that, and if I run my simulation, right? OK, so let's go ahead and start. And then I'm going to push button two. And we're going to look at how this lamp, uh, lamp is doing. So look here, it's already green. Although I have not pushed on this button two, look. When I click on the button, it turns off instead of on. You see here, look, you see? It's the opposite of what I want. It's on, when I click, it goes off. But that's the opposite of, look, what this um, uh, button one does. When I press on it, it becomes on. So how can I change it? Well, for that, I need to go back and change the state. So here I go back and 
you see here, I only have one state, which is zero. You see in state zero, it's green, right? And uh, here I can click and say, well, in um, zero, I wanted gray, and in state one or any other state, I wanted another color. So here I click and say I wanted gray, and gray means all three colors RGB are the same, so I can use all 100, right? That means gray. So if you don't have the color gray, you can set it, right? And uh, so now, look, uh, it's gray, and then maybe blue or red or green or whatever color. So let's say when it turns on, I want it blue. So now let's see if it works. Okay, so it is running. Let's see if other things are working. Good. Okay. Now look what happens. You see, it goes gray from the black, a kind of dark gray. It goes to bright gray. So we did not do it uh, perfectly right. We have to go back and take care of that right now the signal remember it goes from 0 to 2 and here we also have this undefined state right okay which is this guy so let's see if I can get rid of this uh, undefined state okay if you can uh, get rid of this state you see this one you can get rid of and uh, now if I go ahead and say 2 Okay, if it's 0 and 2, because last time it was 1, and you know the signal jumps from 0 to 2, would that turn it to blue? Let's, let's just take a look. Okay, there we go. Look, now I click on button 2, and you see it goes blue. So it turned to that light gray, and it turned to that undefined state, because... Uh, our signal was never 1. When we um, jumped to 2 directly, then it picked the color from that undefined version, which is like an L, like else condition in if then. So it says if 0, kind of dark gray. Uh, else if it's 2, it's blue. Else if it's none of them, go with a kind of bright gray, right? So this is kind of always there. It's not like for you to delete. You can add the states, but you cannot get rid of this. And so here, I got it to work properly. So this is a, a simple demo for joystick. Now, let me show you another application here. And I'm going to share this file with you if you are interested. So here is a crane that is made by MathWorks, so it's not mine. Okay, and it's one of the demos. If you want, you can just in MATLAB search in for VR crane joystick, this file here. If in MATLAB you just type in, in the command window VR virtual reality crane underscore joystick, it brings this guy for you. And uh, here, I assume it's under this one. Yeah, you see the joystick block. Okay, and it has the joystick and you can operate the crane. So that kind of uh, would be a little bit interesting. So here is the load, as you can see. And now look, when I move my, uh, let's run it first. When I move my joystick, it changes the set point of the crane. So your crane moves to uh, the point that you desire, uh, the set point of it, of course. And then you can press this button one to take it exactly where you want to take it. Uh, seems like I am uh, running the wrong file here. OK, it's running now. So let's go back. So now look. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Look here, right? You can see that. You see this uh, red point? This is where I want my uh, load to go. You see, forward, backward, left, and right. So you see, I kind of bring it to the middle of the work environment. And this is was left, right, forward, backward. Now, if I want to lift it up, I use this potentiometer here. Look. You see, it's going up, and I can stop it wherever I want. And now that the set point is there, now I click on this uh, basically button one, and that is going to bring the load to the desired position. Here we go. And you 
can see the uh, basically gantry crane in action. So it is bringing the load right to where I want, and it's not going to go in um, with no overshoot. It goes there, there is a little bit overshoot, and then it tries to correct it and put it there. So there is some control action here. You see? So it is taking it there and ultimately would exactly settle at the desired position. So uh, feel free to uh, uh, work with the demo file that I made for you or uh, work with this one that is made by MathWork and learn how to work with a joystick. Hopefully the uh, video was useful to you and I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you.